So for today's video, we're going to be going over absolutely everything that was changed in season 17 of Clash Royale, and we're going to be reviewing it and rating it on a scale of one to 10. So this is something entirely new that I have never done on the channel before, but I want to do these for every season. So if you guys do enjoy this video, then please be sure to leave a like down below because that really lets me know that you guys do enjoy the video. So this video is going to be split into four different parts. So first up, we're going to take a look at what came with the past Royale and the cosmetics of the update. Then we're going to move on to talk about the balance changes. Then we're going to be talking about some of the new challenges that are coming in season 17. And we're going to finish off with critiquing season 17. So really nothing too significant changed about the past rail, just the new cosmetics and tower skins, of course. So this past rail, like all other past rails, is available to be purchased for $5. In the free rewards, there is nothing changed at all. You still have your crown chest, and at the end, you get your legendary chest, which you can strike to get different legendaries. Of course, the paid side of the past rail does have some changes because it is a brand new season. So we go down to tier 10, and we have the ghostly treasures tower skin. We go to tier 20, and we have an exclusive Mega Knight emote, which is pretty dang cool. And then if we go down to tier 35, we will have the legendary chest again. We also have a legendary trade token at tier 34. And I didn't mention the other trade tokens. We have a common token at tier 29. We have a rare token at tier nine and then an epic token at tier four. And of course, no matter whether you're free to play or you buy the pass rail, you will have your bonus bank in which you can get a maximum of 10,000 extra gold after the season ends. So again, nothing changed about the pass rail except for the new cosmetics for pay to play players. And of course you get the unlimited re-entries in the challenges, you get the golden username, you get to queue your next chest, you get strikes for all your crown chests. Then of course you're able to give your clan mates gifts by buying the pass rail and that gives them a free 500 gold. Next up we have the newest arena in Clash Royale, which is the Royal Tomb Arena. So overall, I actually really like the look of this arena. It looks really cool. It is meant to be a tomb and it looks like a tomb of like a wealthy king and whatever. Of course we can see the skeletons on the side. We have all the gold running around. We have kind of the broken red carpet through the middle of the arena, the broken tiles. It reminds me a lot of the Shocktober arena from season four, if you guys were playing back then. But overall, I really like this arena. So now I have wasted a match in a classic challenge and I'm gonna let this guy three crown me. <laughs> so next up, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the balance changes for season 17. But first things first to go along with these balance changes and to fit the theme of the new arena, I guess. We have the Electro Giant getting boosted for a second straight season. And we also have the Royal Ghost getting the card level boost, which which kind of fits in with the arena. So the first balance change and the most significant one from the season belongs to the Elite Barbarians. They got a major rework in which their speed was decreased from very fast to fast, their hit points were buffed by 14%, their damage was increased by 5.5%, and their hit speed was decreased by 0.2 seconds, which leads to a faster overall DPS. Next up, we have the mini packet, which got a hit speed of minus 0.1 seconds, which means it has a faster DPS. Next up, we had the graveyard, which got a rework in which the skeleton and spawn closer to the edge of the summoning circle. Then we have the tombstone, which got a pretty simple hit point buff of plus 4%. The electro wizard got a pretty simple nerf of getting a damage reduction by 3.5%. The sparky received a nerf as its first hit speed was increased from 0.5 seconds to one second. And then even though it wasn't listed there, the electro giant is getting that buff that we already knew in which its zap ability will be scaled with the actual zap spell in comparison for it to just being consistent at level six. So right now, these are the major challenges that we know about in Clash Royale because they are the ones that are scheduled for in-game. First of all, we have the Royal Ghost Draft Challenge, which as of the recording of this video ends in three days and eight hours. And we also have the Clash Royale League Streak Win Challenge, which is going to be a triple draft challenge in which you have to get 10 wins in 24 hours which is really interesting. And then we also have the Mega Rage Challenge in which one of those Mega Knight emotes is going to be your reward. There may be some more challenges coming in the future, but I'm gonna keep it real. I don't know about that because I'm not in the Supercell Creator Program and I don't have access to content like that. So now I'm going to go over my major critiques for season 17. So this one's a little bit nitpicky, but they didn't really change the background for Clash Royale, you know, like the major background with like the tiles. It would have been cool if it was like a gray. I think like a dark gray or like a gunmetal gray would fit in really well with the tomb theme. But you know, the normal Clash Royale theme isn't terrible either. When looking at the new arena, one thing that's kind of annoying is the sun peeking in from the upper right hand corner. It's a little bit annoying to look at. And also you will notice that you will see some of the gold, you know, doing 
doing a little twinkle, which could be kind of distracting from, you know, the overall match. Again, these are very little things, but they are things that I've noticed and things that I'm not too fond of. So in terms of the pass route, I really don't have any complaints. I think this tower skin is really cool. Honestly, it's a top five tower skin for me. I think the Mega Knight emote is pretty sick as well. And then, of course, we have the other rewards that the pass route has. It is a very good value for $5. You're getting much more than $5 if you buy the pass royale. Now, here's where the critiques really start with the balance changes. So the Elite Barbarian's rework is definitely interesting. It was something that I think nobody expected at all, but I'm definitely going to be interested to see how it does shake up the meta. Just from looking at this rework, I think the Elite Barbarians are going to be a viable card. It is definitely a possibility that the Elite Barbarians could be everywhere, especially on ladder, because they were already somewhat popular on ladder, and if they become even more popular on ladder, then I think a big portion of the community is going to be pretty outraged by that, and we'll have to see what happens with that. I'm gonna keep it real. I don't really think the mini P.E.K.K.A. deserved a buff at all. Their main reasoning is for making it compete more with the Knight, but if you play Clash Royale, then you will know that the mini P.E.K.K.A. and the Knight kind of serve two different purposes. The Knight is a mini tank in which it's used to tank for like a graveyard or meant to, you know, defend swarms and things like that, I guess you could say, but the mini P.E.K.K.A. is more of a tank killer. You play a mini P.E.K.K.A. to take out things like a giant or a golem. It doesn't really have the same purpose of a Knight, so the reasoning for buffing it isn't really justified for me. So the graveyard rework is definitely interesting in which they made the skeleton spawn closer to the outside. Although I don't think it will affect a graveyard that much. I think its uses percentage may go down just a little bit, but I still think it's gonna be one of the most popular win conditions in Clash Royale. The tombstone buff, I really have nothing to say about that. I still think it's gonna be, you know, not very good at all. The Electro Wizard nerf, I think, was somewhat deserved. Although, to keep it real, this nerf is kind of insignificant. The interaction changes with it aren't very significant. Of course, there's that interaction where it takes three hits to kill a minion now, but maybe it'll tone down the Electro Wizard a little bit. And the Sparky nerf, admittedly, was honestly a surprise to me too, because Sparky really isn't overpowered right now. It's a pretty average card in Clash Royale. So, I didn't really expect that nerf, and I really didn't think Sparky deserved that nerf. In terms of these challenges, I really have nothing to critique about them. Sure, the Royal Ghost Draft challenge is is, you know kind of repetitive it's a draft challenge but at least you get a royal ghost and you get some decent chests and gold along the way the clash royale league win streak challenge is definitely interesting i don't think we've ever seen a 24 hour challenge at clash royale and you also get a lot of gold from that and also it's triple draft which is one of my favorite game modes and then the mega rage challenge is going to be like the giant rage challenge a while ago um and the rewards for this are pretty good you get one of each trade token you get a gold chest legendary chest another gold chest a giant chest another gold chest and then an epic chest and of course that emote so the rewards are definitely good and it should definitely be interesting but to keep it real my big Biggest critique with this season of Clash Royale is the fact that they did not nerf the Barbarian Hut. The Barbarian Hut is an interesting card to play against, to say the very least. It is very good, arguably oppressive, because those Barbarians just get so much value, especially in like a graveyard deck, man. In Fireball Bait as well. The Barbarian Hut is just absolutely everywhere, and it's still going to be absolutely everywhere. Another critique I have is that they did say they were going to do improvements to Clan Wars 2 with the next season of Clash Royale, but of course they didn't release it with the beginning of the season. They did say that they are going to be releasing it during the season, but a lot of people, I think, just wanted to have it at the beginning of the season but of course you didn't get that so that's another critique that i have so overall my rating for the seasonal update is going to be about a 7 out of 10. the pass royale was good the balance changes for the most part were pretty good the cosmetics are pretty dope we got a new arena cool new tower skin cool new emotes and the challenges seem to be pretty cool as well so overall definitely an above average season in clash Royale, in my opinion of course there were some things that they didn't fix that they probably should have fixed but like i said not a bad season at all so as i said earlier if you guys did enjoy this video then be sure to leave a like down below i greatly appreciate it and also if you are new to the channel and you like all things clash Royale, then be sure to subscribe down below i'd greatly appreciate it but anyway gamers it's your boy solar fury signing off peace out guys have a nice day